Uh, I have a question for Vincent. You've been around a while. Uh, it seems like you took a while. You know me pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems you maybe were you? to get into yeah. Where are you? Okay. Here. Oh, hi. Oh, this is me. Oh, it's you guys. Okay. Me again, yeah. um, you seem to really enjoy this experience, though, is that you're talking about. It seems like directing is something you've, you've kind of kind of like. Is, do you see yourself doing a lot more of it in the future? It, if they let me, I mean. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to get money, you know, I'm not going to... Is there a reason you haven't done a lot of it up until now? I, I think that as I get older, I grow more insane, and I'm more <laughs> able to than direct. I don't, I don't know. I, I was very busy acting for a very long time in my career, and, and acting is still very, very important to me. And uh, I think as a young actor, I was uh, consumed by it much more than I am as, a, as a, uh, an older actor. I'm more consumed with my kids and my wife and my friends than I was when I was younger. And uh, I think that that helped um, bring other sides of me out. And so I'm exploring and doing more things than I did when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I just, I just acted. That was my whole life. So I guess it's part of that that I've, I'm changing as a... As a man, I guess. Did you want to ask a question right here? Oh, yeah. Uh, question, what type of camera was used to... The old them? Panasonics. They're, at this point, they're like, I guess, four years old now. Is the, the Cine Alta yeah. that we shot it on? Okay, and as far as uh, the release, like when it'll be after the general public like a limited release, or like you were saying, you see how it'll do for the soundtrack, do uh, you know around when, or... Well, I mean, uh, you know, Tri Tribeca and a Amex have this plan that they're going to do theatrical and VOD and and uh, this whole thing that they do nowadays, and, and we're, we're we're thrilled about that. And so, um, it, like always, it all depends on the performance of the film. So that means social media and talk about the film. If you like the film, we would love for you to tell your friends because that's how. These little movies find audiences is by word of mouth. So um, we call it amplifying the message and marketing speak. So we need you all to go out there and, and amplify, please. Yeah, play it, play it loud. You know. <laughs> um, should we take another question? Right here. Hi, Vincent. Um, I heard you speaking at the, the Woodstock event about your next film that you're going to direct, Johnny and Me. Could you uh, explain about how you were inspired to um, write the script, and uh, do you know if the script is ready yet, or when you might be able to work on that film? I don't know if Johnny and Me is, is going to happen or not. The script is not ready. Um, there's other ideas that are milling about that are probably a lot cheaper to shoot, and and that we could do that um, could be just as much fun. And uh, we might do those first. Johnny and Me is a, it's a very difficult subject and it's a very hard script to get it right. And we're still plugging away at it. Well, I understand that because uh, personally I've been affected by autism because I have a brother with autism and I know you spoke about that. And uh, at Woodstock you spoke about autism in your family, something that was very personal to you. And uh, so I can relate to that because I'm an autism advocate myself. And uh, that's one of the reasons I'm recording this because I want to put this on my blog and I want to share this with my s fellow siblings. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, if it, the, it, uh, John, uh, so that everybody, I don't know if this is boring for you all, but there's this uh, story that I thought of that we've been trying to write uh, about a guy who has Asperger's syndrome. And um, it comes from a book, uh, uh, it comes from a magazine article that I read from a magazine, from Brainchild Magazine years ago about a, a girl who was, um, who went deep into her Asperger's and, and only uh, when her mother took her to Disney World and um, she went deep into her Asperger's and only from that point on com communicated through uh, the world of uh, Cinderella. And, and when the article was written, the girl was then uh, 19 years old and you know you still had to call her Cindy and stuff like that even though it wasn't a real name. And this girl has a wonderful life. She, she has a job and she, she, 
she has as good of a life as any of ours. Um, but that that idea that somebody could go that deep in and, and have it be perfectly normal for them and communicate through this thing that's not really their life. And so I thought of this idea about a guy who, a, a man who pretty much goes through the same sort of thing, but he communicates through Johnny Cash and Johnny Cash's music and Johnny Cash's his lyrics and the history of Johnny Cash's life. And it turned into a story about this man and his daughter, a father-daughter relationship, how they have to travel through the South and become father and daughter through this iconic spirit of Johnny Cash. Now, it sounds like a pretty great idea, right? Yeah. Except it's very difficult to write. And we haven't gotten it right yet. And we're going to keep trying until we do. So that's basically what that's about. Thank you. I hope you do get to make the film because I find it very fascinating. I would oh, love to see much. it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take one more. <clears throat> um, we can go back there in the corner. Yeah. Um, I saw Five Minutes Mr. Wells on YouTube. And I was wondering, Sam had mentioned the songs. Does it is it good for you to have something like that seen on YouTube? Is, or is it... Because it's so prolific, I mean, anybody can watch it any time. It gets your picture, or your image, and your word, and your ideas out there. Or does it take away from the marketing of things like that? Five minutes, Mr. Wells, like, look, I, I'm not a good businessman. And, and, and I do things because I want to do them. And, and hopefully people will allow me to do that, you know? And so... I made five minutes. I got the rights to the third man and got the agreement from the Orson Welles estate as long as I never made any money off that movie. And my intention was never to make any money off that movie. Well, and I will just chime in on the business front. Short films don't make any money, so he was right to do the deal he did. Right. Because there, there was never any hope that a short film would make any money. Right. So, so I agreed to those terms, and they gave me all the rights to everything I wanted, Graham Greene's words, everything. And, um, you know, he traveled for a long time, that movie, like I said before. And, and I just, uh, Erica had a hookup with the internet. And we, I said, you know, we should just put that on. You know, what the hell? And uh, it doesn't affect me either way. I just, I'm glad when anybody watches it. It's, it's and, and filmmakers walk a line um, between, you create work to get it seen. So... At a certain point, you have to decide, what, who am I, what am I waiting for? I mean, you know, I'm not going to make a million bucks on this film. That's obvious or whatever, whatever your situation may be. But there's a certain point where you just want people to watch your movie because you made it for an audience. Yeah. Yeah. Nancy's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, that's the To Sam, the music, your music's been in my head for a year. I saw Don't Go in the Woods a year ago at Woodstock. Like, the, cool. the music wow. just keeps popping in my head. So I need, I'm jonesing for a CD. <laughs> he, just was in, he was just uh, in New York performing. Yeah, well, I mean, some of this music exists on records that I've made as Sam Bisbee, but I, I love the recordings of the kids. You know, it's it's amazing. And I, I hope, I think, I think it's a very special recording we all made because we, we spent a lot of time making it very real. And the, the interesting thing is that Vincent worked, it was interesting to work with Vincent as a record producer because he... He worked with the singers to take them away from the safe part of singing and to push them into a performance and to basically scare the shit out of them while, while they were singing, and which is part of what makes the music so visceral in the movie is because they Vincent made them feel like they were truly in the woods, even though we're in a studio in New York City. But thank you very much. Um, so uh, there, there is actually a, a present from... Uh, some of you have a present from American Express... Uh, I'll explain how you're going to get it. Um, American Express is very supportive of card members, so uh, not only do we thank you all for coming to the screening, but some of you have a present uh, because of where you're sitting, um, either Tribeca Film DVDs, or you might have a director's chair like we're sitting in, or a dinner out, or something like that. So if you have a red dot on the back of your seat, like top back headrest thing of your seat, raise your hand and you will get um, some surprise and delight, as we call it. And thank you all for coming. Thank you for supporting independent film. Thank you all for obviously Thanks. your love of, of Vincent and the film. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.